Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. It's Thursday, the 28th of March, 2024. Well, a day to Good Friday. This weekend is going to be the Easter weekend that everyone has been waiting for. And I'm sure, yes, you're gearing up, if you're a Christian, gearing up to, you know, just celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Anyways, on today's show, we'll be looking at some hot topics, one of which um, Port Harcourt, Cardona refineries and Worry refineries may not even get enough crude oil. Another hot topic we'll be looking at is security agencies after firms involved in forex yep, racketeering, and that is by the CBN. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies and some top trending stories. But first, let's look at our quote of the day. There is no shortage of remarkable ideas. What's missing is the will to execute them. There is no shortage of remarkable ideas. What's missing is the will to execute them. And that is by Seth Godin. He's an American author. He has authored several books. And he says this morning, and there is no shortage of remarkable ideas. What's missing is the will to execute them. And that just tells you that you are capable of so much. In fact, whatever you set your mind to do, you can do it. And all of those brilliant ideas, you have them inside of you. Most times we think we don't really have so much. And even when we think about them or these amazing ideas, we don't really execute them. So what is your action plan today? That's the question for you. If you have these lovely ideas, how are you making sure that they come into fruition? How are you making sure that you are improving your life every day with those gifts, those talents that have been deposited? inside of you so the remarkable ideas we all have them in fact sometimes I tell people that God gives ideas to so many but it's only a few that can run with it so are you running with those ideas today it could be anything it could be um, starting a fortune 500 company it could be you know having a small business in the corner shop of your street. it could be anything if it, it could be writing you know lyrics for someone it could be directing a movie script it could be anything so those ideas that you have even if it's painting you should start to do them right now start to execute them and before you know it well you'll be taking the world by storm all right, that's it for our quote of the day. We'll move over to some top trending stories. And this morning, the first one says, Tinubu approves scholarships for children of slain soldiers. President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday um, conferred national honors on 17 members of the Nigerian army who were killed in Delta State on March 14, 2024. This was as he announced the provision of housing facilities for the surviving family members and scholarships for all their children to the university level. He also directed the payment of death benefits to the family members within 90 days. He announced this during the burial ceremony of the slain servicemen at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja. In conferring the honors, he stated each man now belongs to the hallowed list of servicemen and women who defended our country and protected their fellow Nigerians, not minding the risk to their own lives. He noted that the slain soldiers will forever be remembered as heroes who answered the call of duty and paid the ultimate price. Tinubu said, in quotes, they went as peacemakers and peacemakers respectfully seeking to bring an end to the hostilities between the two communities. They didn't go with tanks, machine guns and other weapons. They were on a mission of peace. Ali kept faith with his military calling till the end. On behalf of a grateful nation, we honor the sacrifice of Ali and the other gallant patriots who died that day, the commander in chief said. Um, I'm sure every Nigerian is, you know, our heart goes to the family of the families of these people um, because obviously they've lost their friend, they've lost their brothers, they've lost their husbands, you know, fathers in some cases as well. And so um, I think this is a very, very good way to just honor them. 
honor them, making sure that, you know, their families feel that legacy that has been left by these fallen soldiers. Training their kids to the university level would definitely take a huge um, burden of, from the family's shoulder because obviously education is not cheap and you all, we all want a good education for our children. And so I love the fact that the president has come out. In fact, it just shows that he's sensitive with this kind of issues, he's, he's empathetical to um, what has happened. And that is, those are the kind of qualities that we want to see. And so we commend the president for doing this. Our heart goes to the family of the slain soldiers. And we just hope that this will not repeat itself again. All right, moving over to another top trending stories. This one said public debt stock rose to 97.34 trillion in quarter four 2023, says MBS. The latest data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics says Nigeria's public debt stock rose from 87.91 trillion, um, that's $114.35 billion in the third quarter of 2023, to 97.34 trillion, um, that is $108.23 billion in the fourth quarter of 2023. In its domestic um, and foreign debt report for quarter four 2023 released on Tuesday in Abuja, the NBS said the nation's public debt stock, which included external and domestic debt, grew by 10.73% on a quarter-on-a-quarter quarter basis. The NBS put the country's external debt at 38.22 trillion, um, that's $42.50 billion in quarter four, 2023 stressing that the domestic debt stood at 59.12 um, trillion, that is $65.73 billion. According to the Bureau, um, the share of the external debt to total the public debt stood at 39.26% in quarter four 2023, while domestic debt was recorded at 60.74%. In a breakdown by the state, the Bureau said that the Lagos state recorded the highest domestic debt of 1.05 trillion naira in quarter four of 2023, followed by Delta with 373.41 billion. Jigawa recorded the lowest domestic debt at 42.76 billion, followed by Kebi at 60.69 billion. Meanwhile, Lagos State recorded the highest external debt with $1.24 billion, followed by Kajuna State with $587.07 million. Borneo recorded the lowest external debt with $20.49 million, followed by Yobe with $21.49 million. That is a lot of numbers. <laughs> when you're thinking of debt, I mean, we always say it's good to borrow, but what are you borrowing for? Are we seeing um, the results of whatever you're deciding to do with the money? So if you're saying, I want to build um, certain infrastructure, I want to put healthcare in place, I want to ensure that the children have quality education, it's good to borrow because you know that, okay, for instance, you're going to see the dividends of, you know, what your, the money you've borrowed. But then when you're borrowing and we can't really see that, it, it just, it just screams, what are you doing with our monies? Why are we being frivolous spenders? So we're borrowing just for nothing. And then sinking into that debt pool. So, um, I mean, these are lots of numbers. I think I would ask, I would ask the government, you know, to, to just make sure that we're borrowing for the right reasons. I want to believe they are, um, but we just see how it goes and ensure that every borrowings or every spendings that we have, you know, we're not being frivolous about it. We're not being spent thrift. We are making sure that the monies are going into the right channel to ensure that we have a better nation for everyone in Nigeria. Okay, moving over to our final top trending story. This one says Aburi re-elected um, as Labour Party National Chairman despite NLC's stance. The embattled National Chairman of the Labour Party, LP, Mr. Julius Aburi, has been re-elected for a second term by a unanimous affirmation of delegates despite the protest by the leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC. The chairman of the, Niger of the National Convention and deputy governor of Abia State, Mr. Ikechuku Emetu, declared him the winner during the party's national convention that held in Nnewi, Anambra State. 
Other seven officers of the party were also returned. The NLC had previously called for Abure's resignation as party chairman and the immediate constitution of a caretaker transition committee to organize a legitimate and all-inclusive national convention for the party. Meanwhile, the factional chairman of the Labour Party in Anambra State, Mr. Peter Okoye, has boasted that the Inewi National Convention will not stand. Describing the convention as a sham, Okoye called it illegal. He explained that there was no ward congress, no local government congress, no state congress, and queried who elected the delegates are, who are electing the National Working Committee NWC members. Furthermore, he said the NLC, the TUC, the owners of the party, and members of the NEC and BOT members were absent. He questioned who was holding the convention. Now, there's been a lot, a lot of rockers in the Labour Party. In fact, the NLC had shut down the headquarters a few weeks ago. Um, and then you've just been seeing this back and forth. And people have been asking, or party, some party members have been asking for um, Abure's resignation. But I feel like with things like this, it's just for you to sit down at the table and have conversations instead of, you know, demanding certain things. Um, I know there might be some intricacies to this, but just have a sit down now with re-electing Abure. And if there's an allegation that there were no um, ward congress, no state congress, no local government congress, than who really elected him. So everything should be done by the books. I think a lot of times in Nigeria, sometimes we just like to, you know, just cut corners. Um, even though this is allegedly, but if it was done, um, we'd expect that it should be done the right way. Don't, you don't have to cut corners. Make sure that everything is done by the books. That way you have integrity. That way there's transparency. And then it calls for accountability as well. So make sure that everything is done right. That's what I would say. And for the Labour Party, please just make sure that your house is in order. You can't be um, washing your dirty linen in public. I mean, I know that the, the Labour Party, you know, was founded by the NLC. And you see that's even happened in other countries as well, where the, the NLC or the well, not NLC, but the Labour Congress, you know, they form a party because they want the people's pains, the people's sufferings to be heard. And so they want the people to be represented. But even though, you know, we've seen this, that the NLC was a major force in starting the Labour Party, you, you all have sat down on the same table. You've, you all have eaten together. You've dined and wine together. So why is all of this happening? Just have conversations and see how um, the party can move forward to be a strong opposition party for, you know, the, the, current, um, the current ruling party and, you know, the other ones that spring up as well. All right, that's it for our top trending stories this morning. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers, taking all the global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. But first, let's check the weather. Please stay with us. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.